So the next presentation will be from our um, our vendor, Spatial Engineer. Great, great. Vendor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spatial Engineer. Oh, Analytics. I'll see the introduction. Okay. So for the next 15 minutes. Yeah. Thanks talk, a lot. Talk uh, definitely not fun stuff like that. More fun stuff like this. <coughs> yep. So um, my, my business partner, Ben, who's having the smarter, maybe not better looking one. This guy is not going to be here today, so I'm going to show you what I came here to talk about, which is not about Venom, but it is leveraging some of the things we talked about for um, what Mike Tully went over in terms of accuracy. And basically, you know, accuracy is for everybody, and I think you guys should do some accuracy assumptions of your own because well, one way to tell if this thing can make a map, right? So what do you guys think? You guys seen drones, right? You know, you see them around. Some of you have in your institution, right? So here's my favorite one. It's tiny, small, foldable, right? It's in a, on a plane, on a plane. What do you think? Can it make a map? Sure. Yes. Sure. Excellent. Right. Glad. We have a buy a map? No, I'm joking. That's next. <laughs> so when we talk about we're making a map, is, um, yeah, so that's what we'll talk about right now. You told what Mike did. Awesome work. You hear what Blue Marble talked about with Chris? Also awesome work. Well, I'm telling you, we can do it together if you guys want to. Who owns a drone and flies it for mapping? <clears throat> how good do you think it is? Do you know how good it is? Do you question how good it is? The answer is I'm sure yes. Does your boss question how good it is? I can guarantee you the answer is yes. <laughs> um, the good news is there's a way to tell. The bad news is it's kind of a pain in the butt. Well, there's somewhere in the middle, which is hopefully what we're we'll going to help you out with. So, if you ever flown a drone project? First question is, right, how does that toy make data that I can use in my current enterprise GIS system, enterprise IT system, whether you're talking about, you know, um, geologic or, you know, integrating in the blue marble way, just transforming it between systems. Because you guys have a long history of data that has gone through multiple Fbox and ages. Um, so, what standards should it meet? Like, do you just make one yourself? Is there something out there already for you to look at? Is there somewhere in between that's like, you know what, I'm not a surveyor, but I want to get to some level of accuracy and standards we can talk about with other people because it has to go with other data, otherwise it's hard to compare things. Now lastly, is like, how do you do it for real, right? There's a lot of talk about how you can do it. Has anyone here done an accuracy assessment ever? The land cover data, the simplest thing, right. So simple things are out there to do accuracy assessments. There's statistics, there's mapping, there's math, all the fun stuff of GIS, right? No, not really. But it's there anyway. <laughs> so here's the question, right? That's the question. How accurate is your data? But more quite the question is, can it make one foot contours, right? Can I do a design drawing off this? There are more functional requests that require you to take the data you're getting and crosswalk into existing standards, whether they're planometric mapping standards, or what you should be using are digital data standards. Who's read them? Nobody? I don't read them either. I screen caps them, that's why. Who, what's this? Come on. An ellipsoid. Yes, what kind of ellipsoid? Hopefully. The error ellipsoid, right? <coughs> when, you know, error ellipsoid. Typically, X, Y, kind of the same, Z, way off. So, error is a budget. You're going to have error in your budget no matter what. The question is, can you fit your error in that budget? I really like Mike's point about some softwares that allow you to mush the error around. So if you really focus on what kind of product you want to make, you know, you can choose where to move your error around. Who's seen this before? <coughs> Anybody? This 4D accuracy report. Everyone looks at the number up here. Oh, I'm not going to press it. I don't trust it. There's a number that says error equals this, right? It's a number because people want to see a number. You know it's not the truth, because the truth lays way down here. And this fun stuff, you know, we're all in the day lives. You're not going to look at it, your customer's not going to look at it, but your boss wants to know what's in there, is it right? So what we're hoping to do is take information like this, the vertical and horizontal standards, for digital data as it relates to maybe older or current standards for planimetric collection and try to figure out what are you trying to test, right? Are you testing a project or are you testing a process? Both of which are valid, whether you are buying data from a vendor that you don't know or maybe you do know and want to test their new procedure or you're trying to do it yourself in-house. You got to know this stuff, otherwise you can't use it in your data ecosystem. 
This is it, right? This is it. This is how you're supposed to test accuracy per ASPRS standards, adopted from LIDAR, and now where does it go next? So you can go to drone data land. Well, how do you do it? What would be a way to do this? Get a GPS, get an RTK, get a really accurate unit, and map out a bunch of sites. Who's going to do that on a site where you need to do it for you know, five acres and you know, two days yesterday? Well, you don't need to if you understand your procedure and how to actually move it. But when you do need it, this is what has to get done. You can't skimp. If you do skimp, it's not real data compared to standards. Um, this is the rules, right? You, know, you have to obey the rules in terms of how you're doing your assessment. That's why Mike's talk was excellent, because it really told you how in-depth you can take this. What's really nice about Mike's talk is he told you you can get away with eight control points sometimes, which is pretty nice if you're, you know, if you're trying to do work. So the idea is that you, know, you gain efficiency through proficiency, and that's kind of the fun of any, any kind of project, and that's my next part. So data proficiency, right? You want to be able to produce high quality map data that's going to go into your existing ecosystem and know how good that data is. So it's not about how accurate it is, it's really about how good it is, right? You want to know what it is all together. If it's very accurate, low precision, you can't do it again, how good is it? Maybe for that one job, it's great. All three together, you know, in my opinion, in the drone world, talk about these are kind of adopted from the aerial world into the world of massive amounts of drone data coming at you uh, from probably lots of different vendors, lots of platforms, lots of software producing it. So how do you kind of gauge how good the data is and how it goes in your system? <clears throat> yes, metadata is important. No one does it. The most important thing, no one does, right? We look like taxes, we'd all be in trouble right now. But they're not, thank God. This is the kind of stuff that comes through the drone data process. I thought from the beginning, you know, can this thing make a map for monitoring? Probably. Can that thing make a map? You know, for advanced analytics, definitely not. You know, this is this is a limited sensor, limited flight operation. So, can it make a map? Totally. Can it make the map that you want? It's really hard for me to tell, but I can tell you what it can make, and that's, that's the key. Um, when there was a limited amount of planes flying around the air with million-dollar sensors, this stuff was not varying all the time. So, um, if anyone flies drone data, these four apps will probably change once in a week, maybe once in a month. That is key to your flight operations. If you're not, this is changing, and you're up to date with it. Your flight ops are going to change, your data products are going to change, your product quality is going to change, which is not a good thing for a production system. So this quickly shows you all the variety. The math of overlap is known, is known right? Flying height plus sensor plus how high it's going to cover is known, but everyone does it differently, right? So you have to make sure that you're key on that. Um, the actual software, then in theory, runs the entire time you're flying your drone. It doesn't. When it doesn't, what do you do with it? And understand, when it changes, what do you do to adapt to make sure you're going to keep your process consistent? And then similarly, like you know, I think uh, we pointed out very well is that where you can fly right now, you know, really directly affects your path of profitability or just efficiency in terms of your organization. Don't pick a bad project to fly. Don't pick it over people. Don't pick it where you have to fly over 400 feet to make it profitable. And don't, you know, don't fly, I'm just saying, say, uh, don't fly beyond line of sight, right? Go on top of the hill if you have to. There's lots of ways to get around this stuff, but you have to understand limitations. If you go beyond line of sight, you may not get the thing you're looking for. Um, these are things about any piece of equipment that's in your arsenal. Look familiar, whether it's a piece of GPS equipment, or it's a sniffer, or it's a magnetometer, you have to keep track of that piece of equipment. It's easy to go and get a, you know, a total station calibrated and have that certificate for a year. I will guarantee you your drone certificate might last a day, depending upon how you're flying your device and what it's looking at. It's all <coughs> measurable information, but you have to understand how to measure it. Um, and this talks about the data processing. Once you're done in the field, what software you use does affect the product you're coming out with, especially when it comes down to what buttons you can push and pull to do it. So why am I telling you all this? Because I want to help you answer those questions, if you have those questions for your organization or for people that you're buying data from. No, what you can do is an accuracy assessment, a project-based, product-based assessment according to us the standards. The standards that we follow are the ASPRS or the uh, NSSDA digital data standards. Try to bring things up to that standard so that when you try to compare point cloud data from a drone to the point cloud data from a LiDAR, you understand where they can match and where they don't match. So that's what you get. And also, you know, we've, uh, 
we have a, we have a test range that we put out there that we, we want to know for our own sensors, so we put it out there. We can have this ASPRS 25 checkpoints plus your own ground control, <coughs> bring your team out, and see how good you're actually doing. And then the idea is mapping proficiency development, right? If you decide to do it, or you're going to go in with a vendor that does it, they have to be proficient <coughs> mappers to produce the mapping product you're looking for. Otherwise, you're a bunch of guys out in the field, or ladies, flying drones. Which you can't, that's not my thing. So this is it, right? Typical Pennsylvania crazy place. You know, field, house, pool, woods, street, power lines, everything you can imagine. It's my in-laws property. So I'm out there all the time, I see it every day. Well, it's an accuracy assessment range as well. So you, if someone wants to come out, fly their device, check it out, 25 checkpoints, survey it in, set your own ground control, do your own thing, I'll tell you how good you did. You might not want to hear it, but you're gonna get a report. And then what we call the group of the blue book. So my, my business partner is an ex-army guy. They like to call things various colors of books. I don't know why, it's the way that they are. This is the blue book for drone operations. We've been doing this for a long time. We have a background of LIDAR and data accuracy. This is what we put together to give you an idea. If you are following these rules and procedures, kind of a best of the best, you're going to produce data that is equivalent to what you're used to producing, right? How do I make one foot contours with a drone? Can I do design and build with a drone with a certain power? Those are questions we're looking to answer because people don't have a good answer for that right now. Um, so this is kind of just a sample of kind of what we go through. What are you doing in your operations versus what are you going to get at the end of the day? And then, you know, what do we actually do for you? What do you get for this amount of money? You know, this is what you're going to do. I can talk to you about it afterwards. This is what we're interested in. We hope that people are interested in doing this because we want to see good data flowing into the ecosystem not data coming in muddling the existing kind of confusing environment of GIS anyway. Um, and then, you know, coming soon, maybe? Oh, so we're doing some work on the oil and gas drone. That's going to push the limit beyond, once you get a good map, the photogrammetry world, how do you get a better? Adding higher accuracy precision technologies, magnetometer, and then LiDAR data, all on the same device, specifically focused towards the oil and gas industry to answer questions for their basic infrastructure. That's it. It's time for a break. You can ask me questions afterwards. There's all kinds of soda. What, two hours till the world famous happy hour? <laughs> so close, so close. Thank you guys very much.